There is a county of 1.5 million cows and 1.5, 1.6 million sheep and 800,000 goats. Good evening from the Narrow County in South Rift, a county of pastoral communities that rely on livestock for the economic, as the economic background. Tonight, we are going to put everything in perspective with a panel that includes the governors of the, of, of the area here, the governor of the county of Narok, that is Samuel Olatunai, has been joined by the neighboring uh, county of Nakuru, and we also have experts, including the livestock director, all of them who are going to engage an audience that includes farmers on the issue of livestock as an economic activity in Narok County. And tonight, the town hall will also be engaging the farmers and the ordinary folk in Narok County. And to help me do that is Mashirima Kapombe, who is somewhere in the audience. Good evening, Mashirima. Good evening, Linas. Na kama urivyo sema ni county ambayo uh, ina utajiri wa fijega uchumi. Sio tu masola ya kilimo na ufugaji, lakini pia kuna masola ya utali na pia uchimbaji madini. Lakini kwa leo tutakuwa tuna zamia hilo swala la ufugaji. Kutokana na hafla ambayo ilianza leo ya maonyesho ya mifugo pamoja na mnada. Ambayo itafunguliwa rasmi hapo kesho na raiso uru kenyata. Lakini kama urivyo sema, hapa tukuna wananchi kutoka county ya naro kwa tutufauti tufauti uh, sana sana wakulima ambao watakuwa na wafugaji kundrathi ambao watakuwa wanauliza maswali yao kuhusiana na jinsi ambavyo swala hili la ufugaji litaweza kuimarishwa katika kaunti hii kwa mbatanisha na ile agenda kuu ya serikali uh, kuhusiana na usalama wa chakula na nadhani wale ambao ulionao hapo jukwani wataweza kuwapa majibu ya maswali yao linas Thank you, Mashirema. And let me introduce the panel tonight, starting from my extreme right. We do have Honorable Dr. Korei Olelemain, who is the MP for Narok South. Good evening. Yes. Next to him, we do have the senator of this county, Senator Ledama Olekina. Good evening, Lena. Also in the panel is the Deputy Governor of Nakuru County, Dr. Eric Korei. Good evening, viewers. We also do have the governor of Narok County, uh, His Excellency Governor Samuel Tunai. Good evening, viewers. And finally, we do have the director of livestock production, Mr. Kiptarus uh, Julius. Good evening, viewers. Panelists, thank you very much, and welcome all to the, to the show. And we're going straight to the host governor, that's Governor uh, Samuel Tunai, uh, who is today hosting the inaugural livestock show and auction. First of all, Honorable Tunai, Tell us, what is this about and what does the county intend to achieve by having this show and auction? Thank you so much, uh, Linus Kaikai. First of all, again, we want to welcome you to Naro County. And uh, yes, uh, today we open the doors for uh, our inaugural livestock show in Naro County. And uh, we want to achieve uh, the following. One... We want to showcase uh, livestock and the potential uh, in this county. As you know, you have just said that uh, we do have about 1.5 million uh, cattle in Narok, about 1.6 million sheep, and uh, about 800,000 goats. And, and therefore, as you know, the, this is a pastoral county, so many citizens in Narok County earn their livelihoods through the livestock. And this is why, uh, as a county, and of course uh, uh, using our own uh, county integrated development plan, uh, our first pillar was actually economic empowerment. And we identified uh, livestock as one of the important pillars in terms of improving livelihoods in Narok County. Uh, so by hosting this show, we also want uh, to link, to create uh, markets for our farmers. As you know, a big chunk of the people in Nairobi, Nairobi actually uh, eating meat from our livestock in Narok County. So it's time for Kenyans also to, 
to know about where this life thought is coming and we hope then through that through this show that we'll be able to open other markets uh, for for our county we also are looking at uh, creating value chains in our county we want to uh, partner with uh, investors to put up an abattoir or slaughterhouse in Narrow County so that all the cattle in Narrow are slaughtered in Narrow County and then value addition is added in Narrow County that they are packed in Narrow County to make sausages, for example, corn beef and, and all that so that what is living Narrow is the final product and that way we will create industry and we create jobs for the young people of Narrow County. We also do want to uh, create a milk processing plant. Uh, we have a lot of dairy farmers in Narrow County. And of course, one of the things we are looking in this show is to improve the breeds so that instead of people possessing so many cows producing so little milk, we want them to, po to possess few cows but produce more milk. That way, they can be able, we can be able to also attract investors to come and set milk processing plants, and then value addition is added into this uh, milk. And that way, we create jobs, and, and, and our livestock uh, farmers can be able to have more money into their pockets. This is also what we are looking at. All right. So, uh, through this show, you know, we have brought a number of breeds uh, from uh, other counties, but more importantly, we are showcasing our own because we have a number of farms in Narok uh, where we have very high quality bulls, which some other parts, as you know, this county is very, very large. So through uh, uh, this show, uh, today a number of uh, farms from different parts of this county were able to bring their own breeds into the show and other uh, the other citizens from the other parts are able today to come and know where these uh, breeds are coming from and then they can, we can link them to them both within and outside and therefore be able to improve in their breeds. We also want to create synergy and partnership amongst the stakeholders in our county right. so that they be able, we will be able to link them. Right. And let me, let me just put that to context, uh, what Governor has been describing earlier today. Uh, Mashirima did actually go out there to the showground in Narok and uh, put together this report uh, that will come uh, later because we saw quite interesting things uh, at, at the show. And let me just take it to the other panels because obviously, uh, other panelists, because obviously, uh, Governor, the approach you are taking is collaborative. I see a lot of leaders here today. And let me just start from my uh, far right. What they are take on in terms of what a show like this, a livestock show, would achieve, uh, starting with you, uh, Honorable Corey. Uh, thank you, Linus, and um, let me take, uh, let me pick it, pick it from where the governor has left. Uh, this is a unique show, if I may say so, and uh, truly, this county is a unique county. 70% uh, of this county on, on, a, on a larger size is pastoralist, and uh, bringing it to bringing this kind of show to, to, to the community is an eye-opener. And uh, of course, you have talked about the numbers, talking about 1.6, 1.5, 800,000. Uh, this show will create awareness, not only on the numbers, as you are putting it, but not on, on uh, quantity, but on quality. And that is where we want to go as a county. We want to educate our people that numbers don't matter. What matters is the quality. And, and, and I like the way the governor has put it very well, that uh, um, we want to look at the value addition. We want to look at um, the benefits per se. Of course, we will go deeper and look at it from the beef sector and the dairy sector as well. Yes, and indeed, uh, Honorable uh, Correa, you do talk about quality over quantity, and we will substantively have a discussion about the cultural values around here because it's always been about having as many cows as you can. Uh, let me go to 
Honorable uh, Senator Lekina. <clears throat> Thank you, Linus. I think uh, for many years, having cows, as you rightfully say, has always been a sense of pride. I'm sure most farmers who are here have maybe if uh, the, the fewest cows they might have in their backyard is about maybe two or three hundred. And I think it's about time that we now look at uh, how we can be able to educate our population to be able to realign our existing resources. The land that we used to have, we no longer have that size. Most people now have smaller lands. There is also heavy competition for, um, um, for forage materials. You'll find that a lot of uh, wild animals, particularly in where we have so many cows, are competing with the domestic animals. So, and during the time of February or March, in most cases, this county is littered with dead carcasses. So I think the show will be opened, will, will allow um, people from this county to be able to realize that with a small number of um, kettles or a small number of domesticated animals, they can be able to control the amount of um, uh, fodder they have for them. Because the challenges that we see at the moment involve things like overstocking. So when you overstock, you degrade even the land. So I think it's, it's about time, and I'm quite happy, because I remember when I was growing up in Narok Town as a young boy, that is when we used to have these big shows. We used to have a lot of cows coming from Loita, and, uh, and I'm happy that uh, during this time, uh, this is a step that the county government is taking. Thank you. It will be able to help us. Thank you. Let, let's get some perspectives from outside the, the county, and uh, let's go to the neighboring Nakuru uh, County. Uh, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Eric Korir, a show like this in a very cultural, conservative county uh, where cattle really uh, mean a lot. What do you think would be achieved out of this? Uh, thank you, Linus. Uh, first, I want to thank Governor uh, Tunai for inviting us to come and uh, participate in this show and also bring some, uh, uh, some, some something uh, we are doing in Akuru and see how the, the, the people in Narok can benefit from. But I must say, with the numbers that you have in uh, Narok, as far as the cattle, sheep and goats goes, uh, those numbers are huge and we cannot compare them with what we have in Akuru. But what are we saying? This showcase will actually put Narok in the world pedestal where they can actually show the opportunities that the people of Narok can get from their, what they have. The strengths that they have in them, that is the strength of having the number of cows that they have, and they can also benefit from us in terms of uh, what we have in Akuru. One, we recently, the Governor Tunai, Governor Lenku, and uh, Governor Lee Kenyanjui signed a memorandum where we want to form an economic block between uh, Kajado, Narok, and uh, Nakuru. And, and we will come to substantively to the issue of economic blocks uh, in a moment. Let me just uh, interrupt you and go to uh, Julius Cape Tarus. You are tech. You, you sit as the director of, of, of livestock. What should this show achieve for Narok residents? Okay, thank you. This show uh, will achieve a lot. Uh, basically, the pastoralists, the farmers, will come and learn new innovations. There, there are a lot of demonstrations uh, in the show, so farmers will learn how to grow pasture, how to grow um, soya bean, how to grow beans, and how to rear uh, livestock uh, production. I must say at this stage that uh, livestock plays a very critical role. It contributes 12% uh, to gross national domestic product. If you look at the uh, entire agriculture sector, agriculture sector itself contributes 27% of GDP and uh, it contributes indirectly through manufacturing another 26%. So as a, a national government, we are actually assisting counties like Narok. We are doing a lot of um, boreholes, uh, water pans, so that uh, livestock are able to have water they don't need to move long distances in search of pasture and water. 
We are also encouraging um, construction of hay sheds so that uh, during dry season we have enough pasture to feed our livestock, both uh, sheep and goats, both uh, cattle. We have a big population, as the governor said, 1.5 million cattle, various breeds of uh, cattle, the Saiwal are here, the Asha, the Gansis, the Jassis, and so on. So this show will play a very critical role. We used to have Arambe shows in this uh, county a long time ago, but uh, now the governor has revived uh, the show again. I think we congratulate the governor. So this will assist the farmers really learn a lot and exchange ideas with other farmers. Yeah. All right. Gentlemen, listening to all of you, uh, you all appreciate that there is one key challenge, and that is the cultural challenge. Uh, I think, uh, Honorable Kore, you spoke about qual quality over quantity. And earlier in your remarks, uh, Governor, tonight you did capture that uh, there is a lot of work to be done to change the mindset. Now, the farmers are watching Maasai farmers who prefer culturally. They know that numbers count when it comes to cows. How do you intend to tackle that mind mindset issue? Thank you, Linus. Before that, uh, I want to say that uh, really for the people of Narok and the entire Maasai community in Kajado, in Sampuru, and even Tanzania, that Times have changed. The Maasai community used to possess a lot of land. That land, land is no longer there. We used to be in group ranches where you can, you know, pasture, you can uh, have as much as 2,000 cows, 3,000 cows. Now those group ranches have been subdivided into smaller units and now we have individual titles. And after subdivision, everybody tries to you know, uh, fence his or her land. Therefore, we, we no longer are free to graze your cows uh, as much as you want before. So, in terms of changing our mindset, I want to tell the Maasai community, it's, it's not a choice. You, we don't have a choice. A, a few months, a, weeks ago, we gave out titles in an area called Leshota in Aikara Ward. Before then, people could graze uh, uh, you know, uh, over long distances. But now, that choice is not there because everybody now is fussing his or her land. What do you do with a thousand cows when you have 30 acres or 40 acres? It means we, we have no choice. We have to change. Yes, the traditions were there, but those traditions could only hold that time when we have so much land because for a cow to survive, you need water and you need grass. Now, uh, that grass, that grass, you know, you cannot have as much as you want because the land is smaller. So, what we want to achieve in this is uh, show, and we are going to take this further uh, in, by having uh, programs where we are going to synthesize the people who are already doing that uh, at, the, at the world level, and also those who have organized themselves and have cooperatives, you know, talk to them, so that uh, we tell them that even with 50 acres or 100 acres or 200 acres, and there are some with 500 or so, you are still better than many people in this world. You go to Kiampu County, you get somebody with uh, one acre with about 500 cows. You come to our community here, you get somebody with 200 acres with so many cows, you go to that homestead, you hardly get a glass of milk. So we have to change and ensure that we also move with the times and change our cows. This is why today we, we, we have bulls, we have freshens, bulls here, we have cows which can produce a lot of milk so that you can go and reduce, you know, reduce those cows and even get much, much better than what you are getting when you have so much cows. And, and I know that for our culture, uh, and, and the former chairman of county council is here, Ole Kamwaro, these are our fathers. Those days, I'm a Babayetu Loigero who is here. You know, those days when you have so many cows and you have various bulls, 
the, the key thing is when you go to the local pub, you'll be able to mention so many of the bulls you have. You can do the same and say that, yes, um, my cow is producing 40 liters per day instead of I have a class. We look at the income Governor, we get I'll, I'll from the Allow house. me to just interpret to the viewers who may not understand what a <laughs> manya means. <laughs> Which is basically to swear by, you know, yeah. uh, express your pride uh, through the either shape, size, mm. or number of cows that uh, one owns. And I'll interrupt you. Let me just go to uh, Senator Ledama, taking it up from where the governor is, uh, has reached. And you've seen, even in the audience, we do have old men listening here. And they probably think this is just a conversation that should end tonight. Uh, Lennis, I don't think uh, we have a choice. We do, not, we do not have a choice because of our own doings. When you look at uh, the group branches that the governor has spoken about, those group branches are no more. And if they are, I'll give you a very good practical example. If you go down from here about 20 kilometers and you take the road to Narosura, there is Majimoto Group Ranch. It has been subdivided. That land is no longer owned by the original owners of that land. So really, when you now talk about having so many cows, where are you going to graze them? If you look at even the quality of the land, even the soil itself, it has been completely degraded. So this is something that we must approach it from a broader perspective. We have to look at it. What we have currently that I think, in my view, we can be able to use with a lot of sensitization has got to do with these conservancies that we have. You might find that somebody is a member of a conservancy. Yes, he's um, given up so that that area is reserved for wildlife and maybe he's making a thousand shillings a month per acre. But when you think about it, we might be, it might be necessary for us to go in a rather more drastic approach where we designate certain areas and say 5,000 acres is what you have to live in, where you have to grow your cows, where you have to grow the fodder for these cows. So, by the, and then the rest, we leave it to the wild animals because we cannot be oblivious to the fact that this county depends heavily on the tourism dollar. So we'll, we'll, changing we'll, we'll come to specific uh, proposals on what we need to do, but I just want to bring the uh, governor back again. And this was my experience earlier on when I went to the uh, showground, speaking to the old men there, and they would tell you on the issue of changing breeds. They look at the big, freshian, exotic breeds and say, this is too expensive. It eats like a human being who will afford to feed this one. Thank you. It's a good question. Uh, this is what the county government is already working on. We've already done that. First of all, we're already working with CALRO, and uh, we have uh, actually engaged them and, and paid them so that they are going to provide the AI, artificial insemination, to the citizens of this county free of charge. You are not going to be charged anything. So that... And, and I want to tell again, the same customs come, the same tradition come, that uh, for a Maasai, they'll prefer to see a bull physically. You know, an amenija. You will talk about it, you will You will talk about it, you will talk But the AI... I'll have to interpret that again. Yes. That Maasai is <laughs> prefer to see the bull physically. A physical bull, not artificial insemination. Mm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and this is what we want to tell because we have already done that. And we have trained 30 officers who are going to move around at, uh, at the villages to provide those services free. So if you see them, please engage them and work with them. And it will have the same result, the same impact, you know, with, with the bull, with the physical bull. And it's already, it's already happening. It's important for the people to know that. And, and Governor, the Deputy Governor from Nakuru is smiling at, at your dilemma. <laughs> Maybe we let him weigh in on uh, the issue of artificial insemination and selling it in a 
in a yeah, very in clearly fact, cultural uh, area like fact, this. Linus, I want to say in counties that have actually made tremendous uh, improvement in the type of breeds that we have, they've embraced AI. And uh, in countries that has a lot, that has produced a lot of milk like Kiambu, like even our county in Nakuru, we have a lot of uh, breeds in terms of uh, dairy cows. Uh, people who have those breeds, they actually embrace AI. And the Narok is no exception. Mm. Right. So I to answer your questions, yes. Yes. Uh, there is no, they are not going to spend so much money to upgrade them. Uh, tomorrow also we have bought a number of bulls, which we are pro going to give every ward free of charge. They'll see how they are going to utilize them at that level. So we want to say the county is going to play a very, very big role in ensuring that you are able to upgrade your, your cows either to dairy or, or beef. And yeah, Governor, and, the I, and, I want to hear, and I want to hear, Governor, what kind of support the national government would give in situations like this? You've heard the dilemma of the Governor of Narok. Thank you. I think as a national government, we are assisting the uh, county governments with the uh, AI kits. I think uh, uh, Narok County, is, we, is been, they have, we have given you the AI kit to try to introduce slowly AI in this county. And, and that's uh, because of the decreased land sizes, then you will be able to dispose the bull and have the, the bull in the container. So it will be used by the farmers. Slowly, we will uh, engage, educate the pastoralists, the farmers, and because of the decreased land size, we call for intensification of production. Intensification, we're going to introduce pilot feedlots in some of these counties, uh, Narok being one of them, so that the farmers can see the benefits of intensification. You finish the animals fairly quickly. In six, three months, you are able to sell, to offload to the market. That way, uh, yes. they will be able to, to learn uh, intensification of livestock. And uh, again, through AI services, they are able to upgrade the local the local breeds they have. If you look at the um, Maasai ecosystem, Kajado, Narok, all the way to Kilgoris, uh, Maasai has been, they have been uh, queuing in Kalro to have Saiwal bulls. Mm -hmm. They buy so many bulls, so by introducing now the AI kit, they'll be able not to go now to Kalro again, they'll just go to the, to the kit and say they want a Saiwal, they want a Boran, uh, or a uh, uh, Frisian, uh, Hasha, and that way we'll be able to assist them. And we are also introducing uh, that uh, uh, pastures through Calro. We want to introduce pastures like uh, Senkras, Boma Roads, where they are able to grow and they can be able to be harvested. Yeah, just before you go to, to, to pasture, uh, yeah. Honorable Lemayne has been listening to you. As you simplify it down to a container, a bull yeah. in a container, yeah. he represents Narok South which is one of the most interior uh, uh, count, uh, constituencies in, the, in, this counties, in this county. How would it be received, uh, Honorable Lemayne? Well, um, I, I, I've been listening to my, my friend um, uh, from the national government, uh, Levi Tokovic, and then Pase, the biggest challenge, Lenas, I might speak about, and in the, not, not only in Narok South, but in the entire mass speaking community, is uh, the pasture management. And I think we should not run away from that. Uh, that is our biggest challenge. And uh, uh, in a, as much as we speak about it, I must truly thank the governor of Narok County and congratulate me for coming up with this particular show. Because, per se, uh, the last time, Linus personally, I saw uh, a show like this in this county was almost 35 years ago. That's a long time, for sure. And that's what uh, the Senator Ledama was uh, actually talking about. Uh, the, for us to, to really get what you call value for money is one, in as much as we look at the the land issue. We also want to look at the, the pasture management, uh, 
because for us to get value for money, for this community to indeed uh, come up on matters, uh, the economic aspects, they must be able to correlate between what we said earlier, numbers and value, and what adds value to the same, and that is land management, pasture management, and educating this, uh, our people that it is not about numbers, it is about quality. Quality. That, that's right. And um, we do have an audience that includes farmers uh, right in here. And I can see my colleague Mashirima is actually next to the honorable, I can call him, um, Ole Kamaro, uh, who is right there. Uh, Mashirima is next to you. And Mashirima, there is uh, honorable Kamaro. Ni kama ulikuwa umesoma akili yangu manake swali la kwanza ni kutoka kwake. Asante sana nitasimama na kwa mijajili ya hawa wako hapa wa Masai zisemi hawajasoma lakini kwa jumla wengi wangepata kusikia sauti ya Kiswahili. Na furahi sana na shukuru county government wetu na governor wetu kwa kuweza kuandaa na ku, kuirejesha tena show ambayo ilipotelea ili, ili tokomea zamani asante sana mheshimiwa governor wetu na kuwa na kikao kama hiki asante kwa sisi citizen tv na zingine na kwa viongozi wote nilikuwa na maswali chungu nzima kuhusu mambo ya ufugaji maana hii ni kaunti ya ufugaji moja wapo wale wafugaji lakini governor governor umejibu mambo mengi hata maswali itakuwa machache sana. Nataka kusema ukifanya vile umesema, umesema kujenga abatwa ambayo itakuwa ikimaliza na kufanya kazi yote mpaka mwisho, mpaka ngozi, mpaka kucha ya ngombe, mpaka kila kitu, mpaka pembe inatumika, alafu inatoka hapo imekuwa fedha. Watu wanaro kwa atakuwa wameinuka kabisa. Kwako governor ni kweli hapa watu wa Masai wanafuga ngombe. Wa Masai hakuna kitu unaweza kumtendea kama hujamzaidia kufuga ngombe. Kulikuwa na madumbi hata wakati mimi nilikuwa mwenyekiti. Na tulikuwa tunalipisha pesa kidogo subsidize. Hata kama ni communion eh, 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 dips fikiria hiyo bwana governor alafu itazaidia wale watu ambaye wanafanya hivi. Upande wa serikali naona director wetu wako hapa. Nitakuuliza kwa nini serikali yetu tunayoipenda, tunayoienzi imewachilia factory yetu ya KMC inatokomea? Tutafanya nini? Asante governor kwa kusema tuwe na, na yetu hapa. Lakini serikali kuu Una wajibu, utatuambia nini utafanya kuinua hiyo. Ya mwisho, tukisema mweshimu wa governor ama lina skaikai, tukiongea katika kaundi hii, kuko na mimea mingine hawa ni wafugaji wa mifugo na pia waku, wakulima. Itakuwa ni makosa kubwa, nisipo taja swala nyeti kubwa liku hapa. Hapa kaundi ya Narok, tuko mbele tunakusa am, asilimia amsini na asilia amsini, mia amsini na tano, 55% tunatoa tuna toa ngano hapa. Ngano ile ya kuliwa chapati. Bali, tunatoa sabini na ta, asilimia sabini na tano. Haya, e, viazi lakini kwa upande wa wa wa, wa ngano tunashangaa serikali kuu hata kama hakuna director wa wa agriculture lakini wewe director wetu bwana Kiptarus utapeleka hiyo jambo maana ministry ya agriculture ni moja inagawanyika ya livestock na upande wa agriculture hii ni ni kaundi ambayo inaongoza kwa nini serikali inaruhusu mabwenyenye Kulete saa ile wakati ule wakulima wanafuna ngano mwezi wa saa nane. Afu ala kama mwaka huu ilipeanwa, 
advert ili ilikuwa gazeted kuletwa magunia milioni 28 nafikiri uh, honorable kamaro leo tunazungumzia livestock lakini kama hiyo swali ni nyeti swala nyeti sana hilo ni nyeti ndio hiyo iangaliwe sana hiyo Nadhani Linas maswali ambayo umeulizwa ni mengi eh, kama yanaweza kujibiwa kwanza kabla tuchukue maswali mengine. Asante Mashirima I think we'll give the opportunity to governor uh, Samuel tonight quite a lot of questions to you especially on how you intend to put to practice what you said in your opening statement including um, making livestock commercially viable in Narok County. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Baba Etu uh, Kamaro. Uh, I want to say that uh, we already implementing our CIDP, which of course uh, heavily borrow, borrowed from the His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta, big four agenda of food security and nutrition. And uh, when we focus on livestock, which is why we are here today, we already know as a county what it takes for the citizens to be able to earn more from the livestock than what they have been earning before. And actually what we want is immediately uh, after this, because we have already started uh, implementing uh, certain uh, programs which you already plan. We know that as uh, what is required, of course, is you need the bulls. We have already purchased the bulls, which will be distributed to various wards. That will be part of the program for uh, our citizens to be able to upgrade uh, their livestock into either uh, either beef or dairy. Uh, so that is already on. The AIs have already, uh, as I've said, is already on also. We already also have uh, extension officers who will be helping the farmers, who will be educating the farmers at the grassroots level to be able to help them. And I also want to appeal to, to our citizens because sometimes we do know that uh, a Maasai, even if he has never gone to school, they really know to take care of their cows. But because we are saying we want to modernize our methods, our, our ways of uh, uh, livestock farming, we want to tell them to listen to the extension officers. Because, you know, they have been educated on this, they have been trained on this, and therefore they, they have ideas which definitely they are going to teach you so that you'll be able to upgrade these cows, especially when you are now changing your cows from the local uh, zebus to either, for example, if you are upgrading to freshen or sywall, which I know a lot of people have done, actually it's important. I must thank a lot of farmers, a number of farmers in our county, because there are a lot of farmers who are already somewhere. We know there are farmers in this county who are producing more than 40, 40 liters per day. Others are producing 20, others are producing more than 10 liters. So they are already, we are already somewhere. But we know there is a big backlog which we need them also to catch up and, and, and move to where uh, we want us to move. Right. So I want to tell the chairman that already these initiatives are on. The, the dips which you have talked about, they are also in, in our CIDP and this is part of the things which we want to implement. And I must say also say about the abattoir. You remember in my first term, we actually did get a, a very serious investor who wanted to put up a, an abattoir at that time at, at a place called Lemanet. And I think, Chairman, you, you know very well what happened, the, the politics which came about until the investor had to go back. And I, I'm happy you are here because now you'll help when we talk to the people and tell them we want to do an abattoir, they will know it is for the benefits of the people of Narok when you get anybody coming to put up an abattoir. We did actually get a serious investor who wanted to put up an abattoir. The same thing to the, we do have so a tannery. Are you pledging that the, the same investor is coming back? Uh, and now uh, we have a number of them we are talking to because, you know, we had somebody who was ready then and he had to go back because of a lot of politics. 
So uh, we already are engaging, and, and, and I know uh, that uh, uh, with uh, this uh, good political climate, we know that uh, the investors are going to come, not only for the abattoir, we want to do value addition in wheat, the one the chairman is talking about. We want to, to do value addition so that we have unga. Instead of taking all this wheat to millers in Nairobi or Kisumu, let those millers come and set up industry in Narok so that the value addition is done at Narok itself. And right. it lives here as a finished product. Right. The and same thing we want to do on maize. We want to do value addition here. We want to do value addition on tomatoes. We want to do value addition on potatoes. So that what leaves Narok is a final product. And thanks to the president, we do have the standard gauge railway passing through Narok so that it is the, the, the investors can be able to transport their finished products to the market. So this is, this is what we're working. And this is what we want all of us as the citizens of this county to work together and pull in the same direction. And talking of value addition and talking of the uh, value chain, uh, to the director of uh, livestock, I think part of the question also placed responsibility on the national government on how to assist the county governments to complete the, the value chain. We're talking here about the Kenya Meat Commission, for example, which livestock farmers in this county should be looking at selling their animals to. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, on the issue of Kenya Meat Commission, I want to assure the uh, chairman that the, uh, the, the government has uh, gazetted a new board. We have recruited a new managing commissioner, and they are working tirelessly now to ensure that uh, the marketing uh, of meat is enhanced, and uh, soon you will see a very vibrant Kenya Meat Commission. The challenge was that uh, working capital we are also looking for some money to give them as a working capital so that they are able to maintain buying the animals, slaughtering, selling, and they are able to, to then be able to meet their obligations. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Julius Kiptarus. And uh, on that note, we'll take a very short commercial break. You're watching the town hall uh, live from the Narok County. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs>